What's good, YouTube? DM Gaming here, y'all, and got some more things to talk about with the new DLC. And in this video, guys, I'm going to be discussing how this game can easily reach that 8 to 12 hour mark so please stay tuned for the entire video guys and let's flood the comment section with discussion i'm off work now so i got plenty of time to reply to every single comment so don't forget to subscribe click the sub button right now and turn on that bell see the little things on the outside that means all notifications are on so you don't miss a single upload and let's flood the like button guys you're looking at the new screenshot the or the latest screenshot that came out for the DLC. Trunks is here looking distraught. He's upset, clearly. You can see that. And Gohan is just chilling. They're in the city, though. So I don't think this has anything to do. Somebody was saying that maybe he was training. I don't think this has anything to do with training. I think that this is perhaps after a fight with the androids or something to that. You know, they escaped or something to that effect. But anyway, this is one of the newest screenshots. Trunks with the purple hair. And, and that's something that I do want to point out, guys. Something that a lot of people were saying, and I'm going to go in more detail in a separate video, is people talking about trunks. We're going to be playing with trunks. What about the trunks that's already in the game? Guys, this is DLC. Trunks was unlocked at the end of the main game. Okay? He was unlocked at the end of DLC 1. He was also unlocked at the end of DLC 2. What makes you think we are going to play with the exact same trunks in DLC 3? If we've had to unlock him in the main game and both DLCs, guys, this is going to be a different trunks. This is not going to be the same trunks that we unlock in the story mode. DLC 3 is its own separate entity. And that's what I'm going to get into in this game today because something that I noticed very interesting about this is whenever they... Um, when they announced this, guys, if you go back and watch the trailer, I'm not going to play it because Bandai quick with the copyright. At the end of the trailer, when it goes to this scene, it does the exact same thing that Kakarot does when you turn on the game. This leads me to believe, guys, that DLC 3 may be looked at more as an expansion rather than just DLC. Now, when the producer was talking about DLC, he was talking about the story being about the size of an arc. Let me go pull up that article. I always like pulling up this article here. And this was early on. You know, he says here, the additional scenario will be on par with one story saga, such as the Saiyan or Frieza sagas. Guys, I think that this DLC is more of a... It's going to be, I think it's going to be more of an expansion rather than just regular run of the mill DLC. For one, we know that the androids, they, yeah, you see West City destroyed here, but I don't think it's going to do what the other DLCs did in this, in the sense where we only could go to one area. You see what I'm saying? I think that this is going to potentially be spread out over different areas because that we know that they fought with the androids in different areas. It wasn't just West City. It was in Papaya Town and places like that, unless they, that Papaya Town or something is a part of West City or something, if they do it to that effect. But I honestly believe that it's going to be um, a different, like the, the map's going to be fairly large. I'm looking at this as more of an expansion because I think you, you boot up DLC 3 and then we get the start button here that pops up under the Warrior of Hope. But let, let me get in deeper, guys. Because if we go back to the sales saga, there's some things that were clearly left out. And seeing as that they knew they were doing the, the, the whole trunks thing for DLC 3, leads me to believe full well that they purposely left some of this stuff out to include it later on. You get what I'm saying? So the future trunk stuff, we know, you know, we did the fight with Frieza. You know, but we didn't do is train with Vegeta in the time chamber. We also didn't fight against Perfect Cell as uh, Super Saiyan level two or Super Saiyan grade two trunks. That fight was left out. And that was a pretty, pretty big fight that, that was left out of the main game. Also, at the end of the Cell Saga, we didn't get that whole fight with Trunks and the androids going back into his timeline as well as Trunks in the um trunks fighting against sale at the end you see what i'm saying uh 
And, and, and this is some anime and manga differences that need to be noted. In the anime, Boma takes Trunks along with her to the lookout where he makes numerous appearances in the saga. In the manga, Trunks is never brought along and all is left is Capital Corporation. Y'all didn't go through here and read some of this stuff. Unlike in the anime and the manga, Trunks does not actually fight semi-perfect Cell. Although he does try and attack him, Vegeta stops him from thwarting Cell's plans to attain perfection. Additionally, Krillin Android 16 nor Android 18 attack Cell in the manga either. See, in the manga, they didn't do that. This game is taking stuff away from the anime and it's taking stuff from the manga. So there, there's a reason why some of this stuff is missing from the anime, I mean, from the game that's not in the game. The fight between Future Trunks and Cell is expanded on greatly. OK, a key difference is that in the manga, Future Trunks with his Super Saiyan third grade never once hit Cell, whereas in the anime, he hits him many times. That's something that's very interesting. The, the fight is expounded on. You know what I'm saying? So maybe we'll get some of that expansion. And then the battles featured. Look here at the end. Right here at the end, Future Trunks, Future Gohan, Super Saiyan versus Super Future Android 17 and Future Android 18. And that's a flashback that was only in the anime. Okay? That was only in the anime. Future Yamcha and stuff, that's flashback that was in the anime. We know that they, they were destroyed. Um, Future Trunks versus Second Grade, Semi Perfect Cell. And I'm trying to see if they have Curling and Future Trunks, Super Saiyan Second Grade versus Cell Perfect Form. Future Trunks, Super Saiyan grade, third grade. This is whenever he got really, really big and he was just extremely slow. Okay. Future Trunks, Super Saiyan versus Future Android 17. Like I said, these are all flashbacks that were in the anime and things like that. They don't mention Trunks' battles at the last episode of the... Uh, it doesn't mention that on the last episode. You know, wherever... Trunks goes back into his timeline and fights the androids. But guys, it's very easy for them to fill in 8 to 12 hours. You think the this is what people don't 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 really think about. Gohan. You're missing this right here. There was a lot of years that passed with Trunks and Gohan in the quest of them trying to defeat the androids. And I think that the game is going to explore that because one thing that the game has prided itself on is exploring the unexplored lore. You know, like, for example, in the Cell Saga, Android 16 and Gohan's little connection that they had, you know, they explored that to a little bit more detail. I'm seeing the same thing happen here where the history of Trunks is the foundation, but I think they really go into more detail to develop the relationship between Team Trunks and Gohan, guys, because the history of Trunks, like we know that Gohan was Trunks' mentor, but what we don't really get is the essence of how passionate that not, I'm gonna not gonna say passionate, but how strong of a bond they had. You know what I'm saying? Because they had a very strong bond, and we really don't know where that developed. Yeah, he trained them, but Obviously, Gohan became a father figure to Trunks, and I think that what they do in this game is cover that. You see what I'm saying? We get to see the background of that because one thing that Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is, is a living, breathing world. You know what I'm saying? It's not all about just go from point A to point B and fight. There's subquests involved. There's background stories involved, and, and they may introduce some different characters in this. You know what I'm saying? But this is the Trunks that we're playing with guys we're not playing with the trunks that we have in the game currently as an unlockable character so for those of you thinking about character levels that's another thing that you have to consider i guarantee you we start out at level one with this guy you know what i'm saying and then i know you say the awakening waters but they can easily lock those off from the dlc so that you can't just boost them up to level 250 but this is two separate characters and i know people will say hey well gohan dies early on in the android you know in the in the trunks arc that lets you further know guys that they're gonna stretch this for a while you see what i'm saying they're gonna stretch this there's gonna be a lot of different dialogue there's gonna be a lot of different story elements between trunks and gohan in the special they rushed it a lot but i think when they take this apart they're gonna really really dissect that and i think that we possibly will get to go and play matches like uh uh sale versus 
trunks and and, and experience that part of me kind of wants to because it adds to the entire essence of who trunks was and it builds on his character how can it be that we go and play against the androids and we just all of a sudden skip the part where he goes back into the past and gains all of that strength imagine you're playing the game and they get to that part and they skip it and they say trunks went back into the past and they do it as a whole little small um not even the cut scene y'all know how they do whenever they're it's like a mini cut scene where they're not showing an actual scene they're just showing like still pictures imagine them doing that talking about how strong trunks got and then they flash back to the present where we're back with trunks and he's all of a sudden powered up me personally i would like to experience that myself through the eyes of trunks you know but i get it you know if you go back into the past then wouldn't it make some of the other characters support characters and things like that maybe it would now one issue that people are running into is that y'all think that just because the dlc is uh just because you had dlc one and two that automatically opens the door up for dlc three to be sort of attached to dlc one and two guys this is not the case and the reason i'm going here is just for reference for visual representation guys dlc one and two went together it was part one and part two guys if dlc three was a continuation of one and two they would have named it part two three they didn't do that why because dlc three has nothing to do with dlc one and two look at how they're set up look at the background and i get what you guys are saying why present us with super saiyan god and super saiyan uh blue and then just go backwards and give us something like trunks a lot of people's concern is that the game won't be long enough or that the enemies won't be tough enough guys you're not fighting the enemies with super saiyan blue goku and vegeta you're fighting the enemies with trunks and we have been presented with a game that shows and people say it's dragon ball z kakarot it's about kakarot yes but the reason they're doing trunks is because we've shown you a world where goku exists we've shown you the story of goku and how captivating of a character he is how he's raising everybody to a higher standard and a higher level how he's made friends out of his enemies and now what we want to do is show you what would happen if goku never existed why are they doing that because in the very story of dragon ball z there was a time when goku was about to die and not be able to be brought back with the dragon balls in Lou trunks when he comes in and gives them the cure for the heart virus guys that made people wonder and i know even when we watched it wow how would dragon ball be without goku and if you go deeper into lore and you watch geekdom's channel geekdom 101 then you'll know that he's talked about it many people have talked about it that originally the Cell Saga was supposed to be Gohan taking the mantle, but the anime writers and things like that wanted it to continue going on, and thus they kind of brought Goku back through the Buu Saga and things like that. This is extremely important, guys. Looking at this screen alone shows you that there's going to be a lot more depth to this than these two combined. Guys, an arc makes up several episodes. You see what I'm saying? And if these two episodes were about two hours worth of story, an episode is, I mean, a saga in the game is generally about four hours, you know, four or five hours. Let's take a look here at the Saiyan saga. You had Raditz, you had the fight with Nappa, and you had the fight with Vegeta. Even at two hours, that's six hours between these two if you broke these down into boss battle episodes, which you could very well have done. You see what I'm saying? And then you get to the Frieza saga, and I mean, you had various enemies in that. You get to the Cell saga, we already know. You had the androids, you had uh trunks you you know you had perfect cell in the boo saga you had several different people that you fought over many different times guys it is extremely possible for this to cover that guys now that if you're looking at just them cop they're not gonna copy the history of trunks verbatim it's gonna be different it's gonna be more but people are looking at at, at the history of trunks and saying it can't be eight hours. The only way it can be eight hours is if they include Goku Black. Y'all are wanting Goku Black so bad that you're negating every other possibility, every other realistic possibility for something that, that isn't realistic at this point. 
This is even talked about here as being the story of Trunks and Gohan's struggle against the androids, guys. That's what I read about last time. That's what this this breaks this translates to right here is Trunks and Gohan's struggle with the androids. The androids are the main protagonists or the antagonists, whatever you want to call it. They are the enemy. Goku Black doesn't make sense, even though I presented a video showing there is some slight, slight evidence, guys. It doesn't make sense in the grand scheme of things because Goku Black wasn't even the main enemy in the future Trunk Saga. It was Zamasu. Zamasu was the main enemy. Mer Zamasu, Fuse Zamasu, Angelic Zamasu. You see what I'm saying? It wasn't so much Goku Black. We're putting so much emphasis on Goku Black and Zamasu was the main character of that. Not to mention, Trunks did somewhat defeat him with the sword, but because Zamasu was eternal, it took Goku and Vegeta. This is being advertised as a world where Goku doesn't exist. And I believe that includes Goku Black. I did a video in that video where I was talking about Goku Black, guys. I also presented to you Dabura. We know that in Future Trunks' timeline, he fights against Dabura. He trains with Supreme Kai with the Z-Sword. He fights against Dabura. The Supreme Kai is killed. All of that goes on. Y'all have to realize that that's a very real possibility for the end game boss. And I know you're saying that some people say that Dabura isn't tough enough. But guys, one thing you have to understand is that we're not fighting with Super Saiyan Blue, Goku, and Vegeta. We're fighting with Trunks. So Dabura is plenty strong enough, guys. Trunks had to go Super Saiyan 2 in order to defeat him. Now, you have to get it out of your head thinking about the, the Trunks that's in the game right now. Because like I told y'all in many videos in the past, he is simply an unlockable character. This Trunks is going to have a different moveset. He's going to be different. He's going to look different. He probably even plays different. You got to remember, he's training with Gohan. He's going to have the Masenko. He's going to have some different attacks and things like that as well. As well as maybe some different power or some different tricks to the trade. I don't see them presenting this after giving us Battle of Gods and all the cool stuff that Super Saiyan Blue and Super Saiyan God had only to backtrack and not deliver on that. There has to be more to this, guys. Like, I understand there are times that they do stuff that doesn't make sense, but, dude, I don't see that happening with this, dude. I'm looking at this as more of an expansion rather than just plain old run-of-the-mill DLC. And on top of that, the fact that it's coming out in the summer means that we could still get some sort of free update to technically go along with this. Now, they're not working on it in the Steam files or anything. It could come afterwards. But that's one thing is saying with this being the final DLC, it doesn't mean that it's the final thing for Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. So I hope this answers your question as to how this could be 8 to 12 hours long. If you guys stop looking at it in the aspect of the history of Trunks, you'll come to find out that it can easily be over 8 to 12 hours long. Just like every other saga in the game was over 8 to 12 hours long. This is not the history of Trunks, guys. This is The history of Trunks is the foundation of this, yes. But they are going to go way more in detail than the history of Trunks did. We are going to see a lot of character development between Trunks and Gohan. We're going to really, they're going to give us a sense of just how this world feels. You can look at this screenshot alone. Not so much Gohan because he looked real just pale. He just looks empty of emotion. But looking at Trunks' emotion, guys, they are going to sell this. They are going to make you feel like, wow, man. And, and, and speaking of which, y'all talking about Goku and Vegeta, I think that's another reason why they gave us Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan Blue first before they gave us the history of Trunks. Because look at it like this. It is going to sell it even more because you're going to be like, wow, dude, if we could play this with Goku and Vegeta, it would be so much easier. They did this on purpose for a reason, guys. They built it up for us. They built up Goku. They built up Vegeta with Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan Blue because they wanted us to get to the history of Trunks arc or the warrior, future warrior arc and really see the absence of Goku. Guys, we are going to feel 
in this DLC what it's like to play this game without Goku. Y'all always talked about a Dragon Ball Z game with a different storyline. Now you finally got one and you're complaining. You're still wanting Goku in the form of Goku Black. Why do they give us Super Saiyan Blue and then give us this? Because they want you to feel what it's like to experience just how powerful. Remember in Dragon Ball Super when Trunks himself saw how powerful Goku Goku and Vegeta were, he was like, golly, man, this is going to be easy. And he got punched in the face by Vegeta. No, dude, you're going to do this on your own. You see what I'm saying? We're doing the same thing. Man, if we can play that with Goku and Vegeta, this DLC will be a cinch. No siree. No siree, Bob. It's the exact same effect. It's, it's like giving you something and then taking it away from you. You're going to want it more. And that's exactly how this DLC is going to be. We are going to feel what it's like. We are finally getting a Dragon Ball game in the form of this DLC where Goku is nowhere to be found. And anybody relating to Goku in that sense. This is a world where the feelings of Goku does not exist because he is dead. No Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. No Vegeta Super Saiyan 2. No Super Saiyan 3. No Gotenks no Vegito guys they're doing this purposely and I guarantee you this story is going to be captivating we're going to see how their bond is built we're going to get to feel what it's like to be in this torn down world this post-apocalyptic world where the androids are running rampant we are going to wish for a powerful fighter such as Goku to handle the androids you think the boss battles before were difficult guys don't be surprised if we're fighting both Android 17 and 18 with the complexity of a golden freezer fight in the aggressiveness as well guys you talk about some tough fights coming there are going to be some tough ass battles in this dlc and i think that some of y'all who not happy about it are gonna and talking about it's gonna be easy and things like that i think that you got another thing coming too because with two brand new characters they're not trained you haven't been eating geo big my, my guy the same guy my buddy the legendary subscriber himself is gonna have to start from scratch scratch with these guys it's gonna be difficult guys and they're gonna fill out that eight to twelve hour window for those of y'all that stayed this far man thank you so much man dude the more that I think about this, the more I talk about it, the more excited I get. We're going to dive so much deeper into this in the next video. I'm going to be talking about Gohan and his role in all of this. That's all I got for right now, y'all. Till next time, thanks for watching. Peace.